South Park, Follow Your Dreams by James Tisson. Exterior, South Park Elementary School Gym, Day. The morning sun shines on a banner that reads, Follow Your Dreams, Career Fair. Interior, South Park Elementary School Gym, Day. Stan, Kyle, Butters, Kenny, Cartman, Mr. Mackey, Follow Your Dreams Ferry. Stan, Kyle, Butters, and Kenny meander through the fair booths, perusing pamphlets. Mr. Mackey makes announcements over the loudspeaker as the boys pass by the following booths. One, Jimbo's Gun Shop. Uncle Jimbo demonstrates an assault rifle for a little girl, while a little boy behind him holds a shotgun in the air, looking into its barrel to see what's inside. Passing to number two, Dr. Weinstein's Family Planning. Dr. Weinstein holds an oversized pair of scissors <coughs> over a female patient in stirrups, about to demonstrate his trade for a group of students. Passing to number three, Kathleen's Catholic Crafts. Children stitch red coasters with a white cross in the center. The same image is the O in Catholic. Uh, remember kids, today's career fair gives you a chance to decide what you want to be when you grow up. Okay. If you have any questions, just ask today's mascot to follow your dreams fair and uh, follow your dreams, okay? I heard the mechanics booth lets you drive around the parking lot. Craig said the carpenter taught him how to make a crossbow. Neato! Cartman twirls on the screen. If you dream it, you can be it. <laughs> oh, Craig, what now? You guys, I just meant to follow your dreams fairy, and he's awesome. In twirls the follow your dreams fairy, a skinny, high-pitched man in his late 30s wearing a costume that's half Peter Pan, half ballerina. Hello, beautiful children. You're all special tiny geysers of talent. Remember, follow your dreams, follow your dreams, follow your dreams. Gay. Isn't he great, you guys? If you dream it, you can be it. Follow your dreams fairy throws glitter in the air and twirls away. Makes me feel so alive. Since when do you have dreams, fat ass? You're the stupidest kid in this school. Hey, I have always had dreams. Isn't that right, Clyde Frog? Cartman takes his stuffed frog out of his pocket and speaks for him out of the corner of his mouth. That's right, Eric. You are beautiful and talented, and one day you'll leave this crappy little town behind. Follow your dreams, fairy spins black, spins back in a cloud of more glitter. Why don't you boys check out the chemistry booth? You can be scientists! At Randy's chemistry booth, Randy Marsh gaily pours green fluid from beaker to beaker at a counter topped with whimsical science equipment. Smoke explodes from a Florence flask. Ha ha! The magic of science, children! In the I, middle of the crowd. I thought your dad was a geologist. He is. He's also an idiot. Kenny's hoodie muffles all of his lines. I don't think it's true. I'm the odd. Kenny must be really be dreaming if he thinks he could be a scientist. Don't think that Clyde Frog is just trying to help you, Kenny. He knows what all the woodland creatures know. Which is that poor people can't do anything because they don't go to college. Kermit, you're such a crank. Poor people go to college all the time. And stop talking like a Disney princess. Kenny, poor people don't go to college because they had babies in high school and have no talent. Nope, you'll take over your family's math lab like your father before you and his father before him. It's the stick of life, Kenny. Follow your dreams, fairy twirls to Butters and grabs his hand, forcing him to dance. Believe in yourself! You're all special! Follow your dreams, fairy throws glitter in Butters' face and twirls away. I'm so sick of you picking on Kenny for being poor! You're poor as shit! Butters rubs his eyes and wanders away with his hands out, slightly blinded. I'm not poor, Kyle. Yes, you are. Okay, if I'm so poor, then how come I have an Xbox One and a PS4 and name brand cereals? Because your mom pays for everything on credit. She hasn't worked a day in her life. My mom can't work because she has fibromyalgia. Oh, whatever. The point is, Kenny could become a scientist if you wanted. Right, Stan? Uh... Stan? I mean, Kenny's family's really broke, dude. Carmen's mom could at least get loans or something. <laughs> Kenny is too poor. Stan is on my side. No, I'm not. I can't believe you, Stan. Kenny might have to work harder, but Carmen's a dumb piece of crap, no matter how many loans his mom can get. Hey! Dude, why are you getting so angry? Because! I'm not going to live in a world where a fat, talented retard can get further ahead than Kenny! 
God damn it! I shit bricks of talent and eat them for breakfast. Screw you guys. I'm gonna go follow my dreams. Come on, Stan. Cartman angrily waddle runs away. Butters wanders around that are blind, bumping into people. Hooray! Yes, Stan. Go help Cartman. I'll make sure Kenny becomes a scientist before Cartman does anything. Kyle storms away, pulling Kenny with him. I'm not on his side. Interior, school halls, day, moments later. Cartman and recruiter. Cartman aimlessly roams the halls of the school. Maybe they're right. Maybe I can't follow my dreams. I just don't see how someone as super smart and talented as me could be bad at anything. Part of your world music begins. Look at this school. Isn't it lame? Wouldn't you think that I'm not the same? Wouldn't you think I'm the boy? The boy who has everything. Montage. Cartman lives out his dreams. Cartman performs complex surgery dressed in scrubs, blood squirting from the body. I want to be where the people are. I want to see, want to see them dancing. Cartman argues passionately to a jury, donning mutton chops and a white suit. Walking around on those, what do you call them? Cartman, a sea scientist, snorkels underwater with a dolphin and a crab that tickles his feet. Oh. <laughs> and a long time. Interior, boys' bathroom, day, moments later. Cartman bursts through the door back to reality. He sings to his reflection in the mirror. When's it my turn? Wouldn't I love? The sink overflows with water, which builds into a wave. Back in the school halls. The wave carries Cartman onto a rock in the middle of the school hall and then disappears. Cartman wears a seashell bra and a mermaid tail and sits on top of the rock. Love to explore that shore up above. Suddenly, a slickly dressed man jumps in front of the rock, shouting. Whoa, that is great stuff, kid. Hey, Atoll, I'm in the middle of something. Actually, that's what I wanted to talk to you about. I'm a recruiter for the Boulder Musical Theater Academy, and boy, do you have chutzpah. You should stop by and... Musical theater is fucking gay, dude. Eric adjusts his seashell bra. Well, you got me there. But with your talent, we would accept you in a heartbeat. Did you... Did you just say talent? How long were you working on that number? Oh, I just, just a few hours in my room last night. Wow, that is great. Let's get you talking to our financial aid office. Act one, fade out. Fade in. Interior Broflovsky dinner table, night, days later. Sheila Broflovsky, Leanne Cartman, Randy Marsh, Sheila Marsh, and Gerald Bro Broflovsky. The boys' parents gather at the Broflovskys for dinner. I am so glad the school had a career fair for their kids. Leanne, you must be so proud of Eric for getting accepted into a prestigious art school. Yes, but it's very expensive. I don't know how we're going to pay for it. We hear you. We'd put Stan in private school if we could afford it. We're meeting with the financial aid office tomorrow. I may just have to take out a student loan. The room goes silent. Randy drops a fork on a plate. Did I say something? Nothing, Mrs. Cartman. Just be careful. But the pamphlet for the school sent us said what Gerald means is that we've all done it and it can be a burden. No matter who you go through, Sally Mae, Chase, or, well, anybody, the debt stays with you forever. And you sign up for a lot more than you bargained for, believe you me. What do you mean? Randy stands up on his chair. Can't tell you much, Mrs. Cartman, but we can tell you this. Be careful going down that road. Lots of pain down that road. Lots of pain. Lightning flashes in the background. The board, the parents, bow their heads. Oh my. Interior, Kyle's living room, day, the next day. Kyle, Butters, and Kenny. The boys sprawl around the living room with their laptops, browsing online through the classified ads. There's got to be some sort of kind of science job for you, Kenny. I don't care what Stan and Cartman say. We can do this. Oh, here's one. Seeking young boy to mix fluids in chemistry is right. Generous. And there's an S on generous. 
is a dollar sign, so it must pay well. Butters, I told you to stop looking at Craigslist jobs. They're just gay men looking for sex. Oh. But this doesn't sound like a deal this time. Hey, I think I found one. Independent local lab seeks low-level lab assistant, unpaid internship, with educational opportunity. And they're holding interviews today. Let's go, Kenny. Woo! Interior, Boulder Musical Theater Academy Financial Aid Office. Day, continuous. Leanne Cartman, Cartman, Financial Aid Officers 1 and 2. The financial aid officers look over the Cartman's financial records, very businesslike. They are obnoxiously Caucasian and super positive about everything. All right. The good news is that Eric is receiving a talent-based scholarship of $8,000. Based on his talent? Oh, my. That leaves you with a low, low balance of... $38,000. Fantastic. Pay the man, mother. Sweetie, I can't afford that. What? No worries. There's plenty of government grants for low-income households. Well, thank God for your fibromyalgia, right, Mom? He's right. Based on your income, you're eligible for the Pell Grant. That leaves you with a low, low balance of... $38,000. <clears> the same number. Looks like there was a tuition hike. <coughs> Honey, I don't think we can do this. I, I, I'm sorry. What was that, Mother? I'm not sure I heard you correctly. It sounded like you were denying me a dream I've had my whole life since yesterday. Poopy Kims, I don't have that kind of money. Oh, really? So, you'll blow truck drivers for weed money, but you won't lift a finger to help me follow my dreams. I never. Fiber my out to my ass. Maybe if you suck them off a little, they'll knock off 20 bucks. Eric, you're just being cruel. I'm sorry, I can't do it. <laughs> she runs out of the office sobbing. Keep going, assholes. Me and my mom cry. Interior, exterior, decrepit barn, day, later. Kenny, Kyle, Butters, and Stuart McCormick. Hmm. This is the address. Inside the barn. The door creaks open, and the boys tiptoe inside. Suddenly a light turns on, revealing Stuart McCormick standing over a cheaply constructed lamp. Penny! What the hell are you boys doing here? Huh? Wait, we must be in the wrong place. We saw this ad in the paper for a lab job, and Kenny went to be a scientist, so... K Kenny! Is this true? You want to work in the lab? You were in a test lab? Well, I'll be. I never dreamed I'd be working next to my old boy. Son, you're hired. I'm going to teach you everything my father taught me. This doesn't seem right. This is neat. Can I be a scientist too? Oh, sure. Later. Stuart twists knobs on beakers and burners in the middle of the barn. Rats run along the base of the lab. Kenny and Butter stand on stools in front of the burners wearing goggles. Wow, you were right, Kyle. Following your dreams is easy. Insert poster on wall behind boys, which reads, Meth lab. Cops will be shot and then shot again. <coughs> Back to the boys. Uh, yeah. Quick hits. Breathe in some of these fumes. Kenny, Butters, and Stewart all take a deep breath. Oh, God. Butters and Kenny return dazed and slightly cross-eyed. Hey, mister, you spelled math wrong. Exterior, Boulder Musical Theater Academy, day later. Cartman and the Fall of Your Dreams Fairy. Downtrodden, Cartman pouts as he leaves the school, clutching Clyde Frog. Kyle is right. I'm no better than Kenny. I'll never be nothing. That's not true, Eric. You can do anything. You're wrong, Clyde Frog. I'm worthless. The Fall of Your Dreams Fairy jumps out in front of Eric from behind a bush, still wearing the same costume. Why so blue, Eric? Fall of Your Dreams Fairy. Everything's gone wrong. I'm... I'm too poor to go to school. You know, Eric, there was a time in my life when I was just like you. A chubby little mountain boy who couldn't afford to go to school. <laughs> but you accomplished your dreams, Folly Dreams Fairy. It's true, but only because I found someone who believed in me. She helped me pay for school. I bet she could help you too. Folly Dreams Fairy jumps and twirls. <laughs> for realsies? Sure, her name is Sally. Come on, follow me. I love you, follow your dreams, fairy. Interior, dark cave, night, continuous. Ominous voice. A pair of eyes glows through the darkness, staring into a floating bubble in which we see the follow your dreams, fairy, leading Cartman away from the school. Yes, 
Hurry to me, Landwalker. Hurry to me. <laughs> Act two, fade out. Fade in, exterior, dark forest, night. Cartman and the Follow Your Dreams Ferry. The Follow Your Dreams Ferry holds a lantern as he leads Cartman through a thick and thorny forest. How much further, Follow Your Dreams Ferry? Almost there. Follow Your Dreams Ferry's light shines on a cold and invite, uninviting cave entrance. Some madman has scratched Sally Mae's logo into a rock. You must go forward alone, Eric. But don't worry, Sally will take good care of you. Goodbye, Follow Your Dreams Ferry. Thanks for everything. Carton steps into the cave. God, have mercy on my soul. Interior, Sally Mae Cave Headquarters, night. Cartman and Sally Mae. Cartman eases through the dark tunnel. Slivers of light reflect across the wall. Pairs of eyes blink sporadically from crevices in the darkness. Hello? I was sent here by the Volley Dream Sphere. Cartman hears a deep laugh from the darkness. <laughs> I'm trying to follow my dream. Dear, sweet, innocent child. Poor soul with no one else to turn to. Um, I think that fairy might have brought me to the wrong cave, so I'll just be going now. A thick tentacle strikes a match, lights a lamp, and reveals Sally May, an overtly sexual half-woman, half-octopus sea witch, who survives out of the ocean for reasons never explained. Leaving so soon? Generic Disney villain music begins, a la Poor Unfortunate Souls. Carton screams. Don't be frightened, child. I'm here to help you. It's what I live for. To help talented, disenfranchised human folk like yourself. <laughs> you need $38,000 to fund your precious little dreams. Don't you, my pet? I do. It's yours! Simply pay me back what you can, when you can. Sally caresses him with one of her tentacles. Wait, wait, wait. You're telling me that you're going to fuck over $38,000 with no consequences whatsoever, and I can pay you back whenever I want and however much I want. Something like that. The music stops. Something like that or that? That. Mostly that. Mostly that or that, that? That, that. Pretty much. I'm not asking much. Just a token, really. A trifle. Don't worry about it. What's important is that you'll have what you dream of. You'll leave your crappy little town behind, and you'll be a star. What are you doing, Eric? Don't trust her. Shut up, Clyfrog. You never really believed in me. What do I say? Sally May hands him a parchment contract, which he signs with a fishbone. Exterior, school bus stop, day later. Kyle, Stan, Butters, Junkie, and Kenny. Kenny and Butters fidget nervously, bags under their eyes. And now emaciated Kenny smokes a cigarette. So, how's being a scientist going? Uh, I've got an apple. Good one. Good, good on you. Good apple. A messed up junkie walks on screen with saggy boobs, veiny legs, and bald spots. She stumbles up to Kenny and hands him a wad of bills. Two, please. Kenny hands the junkie two bags. She swipes them, coughs violently, and then stumbles away and collapses behind butters. Does anyone else see all these dwarves? Seven imaginary dwarves with pointed teeth and menacing brows huddle closely around butters, staring intensely with bloodshot eyes and breathing deeply. The dwarves disappear. Stan looks at Butters, then slowly makes eye contact with Kyle. Just shut up, Stan. Shut your fucking mouth! Kenny vomits and collapses to the ground. Oh my god! Kenny! What's going on, Kyle? Oh, you and Carmen were right, dude. Kenny's family's a train wreck. We have to get him to a hospital. I'll explain on the way. What about Butters? There's no time! The boys carry Kenny away. Realizing he is alone, Butters hobbles over to the passed out junkie and pokes her boot. Interior, Cartman's house, day, continuous. 
Cartman, Follow Your Dreams Ferry, Sally May, Financial Aid Officers 1 and 2. Cartman struts through the front door and up the stairs to his room, crudely singing an a cappella version of Part of Your World Reprise. I'm going to school, I'm better than Kyle and Kenny, and now I'm finally part of Dad. Cartman's bedroom. Cartman flings open the door and jumps on his bed. Well, well, Clyde Bob, looks like yet another happy ending in your standard three-act structure. Good night. I love you. Suddenly, a nearly naked hollow shell of the Follow Your Dreams fairy burst from Cartman's closet, screaming. Follow Your Dreams fairy! What happened to you? The uh, fairy did something bad. What the fudge are you talking about, Follow Your Dreams fairy? I did it. Stupid fairy, stupid lying fairy that sold out! Led you to the Sally! But she helped me. You don't know what she wants. What you signed up for? The sun sets into the horizon through the window. What do you mean, Follow Your Dreams fairy? The sun sets completely, the sky turns dark, and storm clouds rush in. Follow Your Dreams Fairy freezes, paralyzed with fear, giggling and softly weeping. <laughs> They're here. What did I sign up for? What happens, Follow Your Dreams Fairy? What have you done? The ground opens up beneath Eric, who screams, and out of this dark hole burst the financial aid officers, who slither about the room laughing, still donning their oxfords and khaki. Not these assholes again. You did your job well, fairy. Here is your reward. They throw the Follow Your Dreams fairy a fish head, which he eats ravenously. Sally bursts from the pit, laughing. Wait, you're all working together? Foolish landwalker. The schools need you, you need money, and I need slaves. Now, bend over and prepare for the most orgasmically painful interest payment in the seven seas. What are you talking about? She's going to rape you. Starting next. Then once a month, every month for the next 30 years. And the contract is tighter than a 10-year-old boy who didn't read the fine print. <laughs> no. No! Cartman runs out of his bedroom and down the stairs. Run, Eric, run! Silence, fairy! Seize him! Act three, fade out. Fade in. Interior, exterior, neighborhood streets, night. Cartman, Mr. Garrison, Maleficent, Corella DeVille, Jafar, and Parrot. Cartman runs down the block holding Clyde Frog. Sally May bursts through his roof, growing larger and larger with each step. This is all your fault, Clyde Frog. Cartman runs into the nearest house. Inside the house, slamming the door behind him, Cartman screams for help, but then stops suddenly when he realizes what he's walked in on. Maleficent, Cruella de Vil, and Jafar lookalikes bend Mr. Garrison over the couch, gleefully and aggressively penetrating him. Jafar has a parrot on his shoulder. Oh yeah, punish me! Punish me for being poor! Mr. Garrison, do you owe Sally May money too? They all stop and look up. Actually, I'm from Citibank. I'm from Chase. <laughs> we are just poivots. Get out of my house, Eric Kirkman! Suddenly, a now gargantuan Sally Mae tears the roof off Mr. Garrison's house. Cartman screams and runs out the front door. Exterior, neighborhood sidewalk, night, moments later. Cartman, Stan, Kyle, and Kenny. Cartman flees from the house and runs into Kyle and Stan, who carry a nearly dead Kenny. Oh, hey, Stan. Thanks for all your help with my dreams. I am not on your side. What the hell is after you? Sally Mae, she wants to rape me. Let her, dude. She's destroying the town. Exterior, middle of the street, night. Sally May, Randy Marsh, Sharon Marsh, Kyle, Stan, Cartman, Kenny, and townspeople. Sally May destroys everything in her path, house by house. Citizens scurry about in chaos. Randy Marsh runs onto the scene. Oh, ancient octopus sea witch Sally May, how have we angered you? We've done everything she's asked of us. Oh, Dad, Sally May is trying to rape Cartman, but you won't let her. And Kenny overdosed on meth because Stan didn't believe in his dreams. I never said that. Stan Marsh, how dare you belittle Kenny's dreams? You're grounded, mister. God damn it. And Eric, if Sally Mae gave you money, then you just have to let her rape you. What? 
Did you think you could rise above your station in life and not get raped once a month for 30 years? What are you, retarded? This isn't France. I didn't know. Please, she tricked me. She never told me. There, there, little landwalker. Let me fix this. Everyone, please stop panicking. The crowd freezes in their positions. Sally May continues to destroy things. You too, Sally. Sally May freezes in the middle of throwing a car and then looks down, embarrassed. Everyone, Sally May is upset because she tricked Eric Cartman into signing up for a student loan without telling him about the consequences. You mean... If we hand the boy over to Sally, we're saved. Hooray! What? You think you're better than us, kid? Yeah, I've been getting raped by Sally May once a month for four years. I haven't sat in a chair in the last nine years. I just stand now. It is the unspoken contract between man and sea. The price we pay for financing our dreams. So decideth the Sally, daughter of Poseidon. You think you're better than us? You're damn right I'm better than you. I'm talented and handsome with the voice of an angel. You're all a bunch of trash. Goddamn trash. Moments later, the crowd lifts Eric above their heads and surf into Sally, ritualistically chanting, Dream it. Be it. Exterior, middle of crowd, night, moments later. Kyle, Stan, Randy Marsh, Kenny, Uncle Jimbo, local redneck, and townspeople. The boys and Randy stand in front of the crowd. A giant lake in the background has a shore upon which Sally Mae slowly seduces Cartman. You know, I learned something today. Grown-ups are always selling us on the idea of following our dreams. They tell us how special and talented we are, but they never say anything about how to actually make them happen. Sally May removes Cartman's clothing and licks him with her serpentine tongue. He screams in pain in the distance. Turns out, it's not easy. And if opportunity seems too good to be true, it probably is. One thing is for sure, taking on debt to pay for school is a really bad idea. I'm gonna kill that fucking fan. Be realistic about your goals. Work really hard and achieve them. And don't become an indentured sex slave to a sea which to make them happen. It's super gay. Sally Mae finishes with Eric and swan dives into the lake. Eric crawls away on the ground and then collapses. The crowd is silent. Wait, that's what you learn? Don't take out loans and work hard? Um, yeah? There's a reason we all signed up to let an octopus rape us, Kyle. What do you mean? I can barely afford community college and I'm working three jobs. I need the loans. Oh. Get another job? Crowd boos. Jesus, are you retarded? The idea that you can work hard and happy is well and good, but in reality, you need money to get ahead. And if you don't have money, you have to get money from someone. My only options were to sign on for a massive school loan or take over my family's meth lab. That reminds me, does anybody want any meth? I'll take some meth. Wait, I forgot I learned something else today. Meth is bad. Really bad. If you're poor, stay away from meth. Instead, if you want to get ahead, try... Uh, you, you should... There's... Um... Uh, Several crowd members furrow their brows. I had it like two seconds ago. Just give me a minute. If you're poor in America and you want to get ahead, you should... Ah, uh, what is it? This kid's an idiot. Let's do meth! Chinchinchera! The crowd swiftly exits, leaving Kyle, Stan, Kenny, and Randy behind. Man, being poor fucking sucks. I guess that's what I was trying to say all along, dude. But why are we letting some rapey merwitch call the shots? That's a good question, Kyle. Until America acknowledges the unspoken rigidity of its class structure, children like Kenny and Cartman will continue to be caught in the cycle of poverty. So decided Sally, daughter of Poseidon. It's the circle of life. Okay, so really then, why don't we do something to change the system? Poor kids don't stand a chance. Because we're not poor, Kyle. And that's what really matters. Seriously, are you retarded? Rats burst out of Kenny's stomach and spasm on the ground, clearly addicted to men. Act 4, fade out. <laughs>